How do you know when it's the right time to let your date meet your family and your friends? Hey, Damon Owens here. And today we have a question right about the right time to let your date meet your family and your friends. Hmm, okay. Well, let's first recognize that there are so many variables, right? And situations that go into your discernment and your decision. Like, what is your actual family and family life like, right? Close-knit, are you distant, uh, a strange, big, small? Are you the youngest? You know what that dynamic's like. Are you the oldest in your family? You get it. So be attentive to these things. You are the expert in your life and your your relationship. So keep an, an, a sense here of, of what that interaction is in its objective sense with your family. And your same thing with your friend circle. Uh, what's your friend circle like? Are they social? Do you do things around events? Do you talk about important things? Are you more event driven? How close are you? Is, is your circle big of friends or is it small? Keep that in mind. And of course, where are you in your dating relationship? Again, as the expert in the dynamics of all these relationships, you are, you have a lot to consider. So acknowledging that your mileage may vary, let's talk about five things that you should consider. First, your tribe loves you, right? And they want and they will your best. They, your family, your friends, they fight for you in whatever makes sense in the specifics of the person or the temperament, personality. But you can count on your tribe, your friends, your family as wanting and loving you, right? And wanting the best for you. So overall, this meeting is a good thing. Yeah, first impressions are very important. You can't possibly control the meetup itself or the outcome. And that's a good thing. Control is, is an illusion. Your, but your posse is your posse, right? And they have your back. So don't be tempted to, to be a lone ranger and let the fear of that encounter or situation or getting it perfect and right keep you from the fact that the meeting is a good thing. So number one, your tribe loves you. Number two, your tribe knows your past, your present, and your future. <laughs> That's good, bad. Uh, they know your patterns. You know They know you sometimes. Good friends know us better than we know ourselves. So you, this, this meeting can get you out of your head, especially if you're an overthinker like me, right? All the possible scenario. Or if you're an overfeeler where everything is just really um, you know, felt deeply. Are you impulsive? Are you cautious? Do you tend to, to overshare or are you more of a, a recluse in terms of when it comes to the movements of your heart? But I can promise you this, fighting with your posse is always better than fighting alone as a Lone Ranger, right? Your tribe knows you. So lean into that as you're discerning you know, the next stage of your relationship, whether you continue to grow deeper or for marriage or for maybe ending it. Not all relationships that end are bad, right? Sometimes good relationships need to end for something better later. That's another talk. Maybe we'll talk about that one. Number three, their opinion, meaning your friends and your family, is not your decision, right? Maintain that space of freedom. Their opinion matters. It's important to you because for reasons we'll talk about in a moment, but their opinion is not your decision. So it's important that we don't catastrophize that I'm bringing my date to my friends and family so they can help me decide or they can decide for me, right? Think about it as more eyes to set you free, more eyes to see things in you, see things in them, see you two together. You know, we all have blind spots. But on the other side, we can't please everyone. So if the meetup is sort of mixed in with this sense of wanting to please everybody, to make sure everything goes great, man, what pressure. Just release yourself from that and bring that to the Lord. Say, Lord, I really want this. Your will be done. These are the people that are part of my life. Now, unless the meeting itself is the meeting, you know, where marriage is the topic and parents are involved and kids and explicitly making the decision about marriage, look forward just to seeing how everyone gets along, right? It's an exciting in, in the sense that people are important, that are important in your life. And in your search for your happiness, they get to share this part of your life with you. And of course, it's going to be the people you know. Some are going to be so opinionated. Some are going to be, you know, distant. Whatever. All those dynamics are going to be there. But prayer and real discernment are still your main power tools here. But you can be sure your friends and family will see and they'll know things that make them an important part of that marriage discernment process. So listen to them. But don't give up the freedom to make the decision about whether you continue or move on. Allow them to be part of that. So marriage is um, its important to include everyone as early as possible. Number four, marriage is public. 
Uh, and so dating should also add and multiply to your life. And that life meaning your family, your friends, your interests, it shouldn't divide or subtract from your life. So that public dimension means that whatever the fears we have about introducing, you know, spheres of our life together, you know, it's always strange like when your family comes to your job or when somebody from work happens to see you at the grocery store. Or it's always a strange feeling when our worlds, you know, rightly interact. But in this sense, the public dimension of our romantic life of marriage as a possibility means that that these encounters are important. It's important for us to see and to learn about ourselves, about each other, about what this adding and multiplying might look like if this relationship goes forward. So number four, marriage is public. And our final one, number five, it's important to set clear or as clear as possible, honest expectations beforehand with your date. Set those expectations. Do the same thing with your friends or with your family and make them very specific to the event, right? Be realistic about the expectations without you know, the two extremes. I'm always about the extremes, right? One side is minimizing, like, oh, it's nothing. It's, you know, they'll be with me as, you know, girlfriends, boyfriends come in and out, dating comes in and out. That's one extreme. The other extreme is catastrophizing, like every meeting is the meeting that's going to determine my future and, and the future of the relationship. Way too much pressure. So in between those two extremes, be specific about the event. Look, a barbecue or a fast food meetup is very different than a wedding, you know, and your plus one or your little sister's birthday, or, you know, a ritual or, you know, something that's part of your family, it's, you know, is your household usually welcoming? Uh, and in the sense of like, we always have a, a friends of ours who have Sunday dinners and they've had it for 50 years. And the family comes together literally every Sunday with extended and other, and it's just part of it. So bringing someone to that is less of a big deal than it would be, you know, to a small family who might not meet regularly. So be specific about the event to help to set expectations and do your best you can with your date, with yourself and with others about what this means and let the Lord do what the Lord is going to do. Wow. Plenty for now. Love to hear your comments and your experiences with these in real life situations. But remember the Catholic Match is here to help you to be more successful in your search for forever love. Drop those comments and requests for topics below you want me to cover in future episodes and of course be like subscribe and hit that notification bell to be alerted for new videos that's all for now we'll talk to you soon god bless you.